Chapter 9 Outer Receiving Office and Recyclery With the door shutting behind us, I put my phone back in sleep mode. I checked my pockets for the important bits, wallets, keys, etc. I got my flashlight out and turned it back on, scanning the room quickly for some reason, immediately expecting the worst, but thankfully nobody was there. It was exactly as I thought. The place had been abandoned, but the bank never actually repossessed it. This was extremely common, with banks foreclosing on properties faster than they had the resources to manage the properties when there was nobody to even sell the properties to. It left millions out of work in factories and warehouses in every city completely vacant that used to employ thousands. So as I was thinking about all this, I was scanning my surroundings, looking for materials, and gathering clues about how many resources I would have access to. This tiny room was out of the elements, but it was only a steel door, and this room wasn't exactly much warmer as I could still see my breath a little bit. I would have needed some blankets or heat still, and there was no electricity, so I needed to keep searching for supplies. Figuring out what kind of room it was would give me clues as to what I might be able to find in here. The first thing I noticed is it seemed to be a segmented off receiving only area for drivers. This meant most likely the door I saw in front of me leading to the rest of the facility was going to be locked. I checked to make sure and it was locked and completely solid. As I pointed my ghostly flashlight from area to area, I also opened every cabinet I could find just to see what I could find. It was typical stuff you would find in a receiving office such as pens, extra receiving paperwork, and miscellaneous office equipment. A heavy steel shutter separated the receiving office from what would be the rest of the building. If the shutter was lifted, a little clerk's booth would be on the other side. That shutter wasn't going anywhere, so it was bolted down from the other side with a heavy bolt and strong clasp. I did manage to find some extra batteries in a drawer during my search, though, and to my approval, they were AAA lithium batteries, so I grabbed three and put them in my pocket. I heard something move in the greater warehouse, and I snapped my flashlight off and waited. Five long, cold minutes passed, and no new sounds. I clicked my flashlight back on and resumed my search. There was an empty spot on the wall where the first aid kit was supposed to be, and the food vending machine was empty of anything of nutritional value. There was no power running to it anyway, and I was committed to not vandalizing the facility. I moved from the higher cabinets and waist-high cabinets to lower cabinets and found some cat food and another bowl, but no name on it. I hadn't seen Monster Cat in a while, but figured maybe he was tired of eating his cuisine of whatever he was catching outside, and figured I was the guy who was going to get him back to his routine. I first made sure the food smelled dry, and it did, and poured some in the dish. Within a few seconds, the cat appeared again, snarfing down the food. I scooted the dish over to a corner so I wouldn't disturb the cat, and caused myself to be on the menu by mistake. I looked on the bag, hoping for a clue as to the cat's name, maybe, but nothing. Every receiving office had a bathroom for the drivers, and this one was no different. I opened the door, and it was well taken care of. I left the sink on a drip for the cat and proceeded to use the bathroom. This gave me a moment to think, and I decided that in this moment I would turn my cell phone completely off. This warehouse was going to be a cell signal dead zone, or at least severely drain my battery, as my phone would be trying to boost its signal trying to reach out to the nearby tower. Also, with the power going out around here, or whatever was happening, it would only be a matter of time before the cell towers ceased to function also. Cell towers, I think, all had emergency generators, but they didn't last long, usually. Maybe only a few hours at best. The tower shutting down would drain my cell phone battery the worst, as my phone tried to desperately to find a signal. There'd be no way to estimate when that could happen, so I needed to shut my phone off soon regardless. I did still have a tiny signal, but still, nobody to call. No real emergency either. With such a weak signal, my apps requiring data wouldn't work at all. Data was always the first to go, then voice, then text. Thinking more about the water, it occurred to me that the water still functioned properly here. I had, I supposed that this was because the bank had taken over the water payments. They must have intended on using the facility, then stopped paying attention. Leaving the water on didn't really cost the bank anything, I guess, as long as it wasn't running. The pipes weren't at risk of freezing inside the building either. I checked the time on my phone last la, la, la. I checked the time on my phone one last time. Figured I had something like three and a half hours left until sunrise. Then I shut the phone off and put it in my pocket. I finished my business about the same time as the cat, and as soon as the cat was done with the sink, I washed my hands and shut the sink off. 
Then the cat and I walked back into the main receiving room. I was at a loss for what to do at this point. I know I couldn't stay in this room again because it was too cold. I had only made it this long because I kept progressing, moving, and staying positive. If at any point I had stopped, I would start to cool down and it would be very dangerous for my body. It felt like 40 degrees and my thermal hoodie was only keeping me as warm as I was staying. It couldn't get me any warmer like a heavier jacket would. I had to make it through this next set of doors, but honestly there was no way through them. Since I was completely out of options, I asked the cat, Hey cat, how do you get through the doors? <sighs> the cat seemed to look at me almost puzzled and sort of like it had a memory from a long time ago. Then it seemed like the memory wasn't from so long ago, then it balanced somewhere in the middle. The cat then quickly moved, and before I could really shine my light exactly on where the cat was, it disappeared literally straight through a wall. I lost sight of the cat a few feet from the door under a steel bench. That's when I heard an audible click, 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 in the mechanism adjacent to the door lock. I reached to the door and pulled, and it held strong for a split second. With a click, click, the door flung open with me holding the handle with weight on it. I sprawled backwards due to the door opening at an awkward tempo to my pulling's rhythm. As I fell, the doorknob slipped out of my hand. The door immediately started to close under its own weight, including support from the springs and the hydraulics and the above mechanism. I landed on my side of no grace, crunching the energy drink can in my pocket against my body. I reacted quickly, scooting myself along the tile floor with one big push, then catching the door with my foot. Breathing a sigh of relief, I bent my leg to open the door a comfortable margin. Deciding not to risk getting up and fumbling again, I crawled on my hands and knees into the main body of the warehouse.